who walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion and may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. That's the first version. The second version, I will read out to you and you will declare after me. Hallelujah. You are blessed because you fear the Lord. I want us to declare it, so I'm going to make it in first person so you can declare with me. I am blessed because I fear the Lord and I walk in his ways. I will eat the labor of my hands and I shall be happy. It is well with me and all that concerns me. I declare that I am as a fruitful vine in the heart of my home, alongside my husband, our children, like only plants all around our table. Behold, I am the one who is blessed by Yahweh because I fear the Lord. The Lord blesses me out of Zion. I will see the good of Nigeria. I will see the good of Africa all the days of my life. Yes, I will see my children's children's children. I will see my children's children's children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peace be upon the Kurumis. Peace be upon the Kurumis. I thought I had Kurumi. Are you calling your own lineage? Hallelujah. Give a lot of big shout of praise. Please be seated in Jesus' name. Such a joy to be with you today. An amazing, amazing privilege to share this extraordinary time in the Lord's presence. With you, I bring you great greetings from my husband, pastor, best friend, super lover, extremely gorgeous hunk of a man, Deji Kurumi. He is today ministering at our local assembly at the baptizing church in Lekki, and he sent me as a representative to you, and he definitely um, has a lot of love in his heart for this house, and very importantly also for the shepherds that God has placed over this house. Allow me to take a moment this morning to celebrate everyone, especially those who labor over us in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you want to give thanks for all our ministers and all our pastors? Would you celebrate Minister Mary Idowu? Can you do it with all your heart? Celebrate Minister Ayodada. Can I hear you celebrating? Please celebrate Minister Sam Egbe. Please celebrate him. Please celebrate Minister Cedric Adams. Would you do that for me? Please celebrate Minister Grace Oluwatayo. Hallelujah. Please celebrate Minister Isaac Abiola. We love and honor you. Amen. Please celebrate Minister Sheung Awofisayo. Amen. Please celebrate Minister Anthony Muddy. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate Pastor Tosi Oloni Lua. Amen. Celebrate Pastor Ayo Oluwatayo. I can hear you, GC. Please celebrate Pastor Taye Osage Day. Can you do that for us? Please celebrate Pastor Oladipupo Lemoshe. Can you honor him? Please celebrate Pastor Niyi Bolahon. Please celebrate him. Celebrate Pastor Tsunde Idowu. Hallelujah. Celebrate Pastor Agnes Modi. Please celebrate Pastor Lara Adekoya. Please celebrate Pastor Deyemi Adekoya. Hallelujah. Do you want to rise?
tonight and celebrate the first lady, Pastor Devo Alalemo. So do you want to give God praise for a gift that God has given us in our shepherds? And you want to celebrate Father over the house, a worthy man of God, back with a new anointing from his vacation. Do you want to honor Pastor Taiwo Lemoshe this morning? We love you. We bless God for you. Glory to Jesus. Let's take a moment to pray for our ministry gifts. We declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will go from strength to strength. We declare that the hand of the Lord will be mighty over you. We declare that you will continue to serve with the integrity of your heart and with skillfulness of hands. We declare that you operate in effectiveness in the anointing, that you are diligent in the study of scriptures, and you have great understanding of the mysteries of the spirit. We declare that because of you, God's chambers will attain its destiny in God. We declare that because of you, we will go from strength to strength. We declare that the entire committee of pastors and ministers are bound together in unity and one accord. And they continue to lift the hands of the set man in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for these things you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless our pastors. And I, I trust that we have a kind of house that often just blesses our pastors, honors our ministers, and we're just generous toward them. I pray that ever so often, every month, every quarter, you just be like, ah, ah, what can I do for Pastor Taiwo like this? That your heart will just be indicting a good matter. That's a sign of a blessed house. That's a sign of a blessed church. Often thinking about how we can serve those who serve us in the gospel. And I just declare over you the things the Lord has led me to pray. And I took note of the direction he kept leading me. Um, as I thought about this house and prayed for you. And three things stand out very strongly that I want to, you know, sort of alert you to this morning that uh, sounded very strongly in my spirit as prophetic representations of the seasons that this house is coming into. The first thing I discern very strongly is that God is raising partners for the vision. God is expanding the partnership base for the work of ministry. By the way, I hope you know that GC is just an expression in the committee of expressions that is in the womb of Pastor Ty William Oshie's spirit. I hope you recognize that. And he is coming into an hour of apostolic procession. And what that means is that right from the support and the partnership that God will offer him in this house, you'll be able to send him to the nations to say, go and be a blessing. And I can really send missionary exploits across the continent of Africa. It's time for him, you know, to much more take this unique dimension of insight in the gospel, this fatherhood, this, this unique mentorship grace that he carries to other parts of the earth, you see. And as the Lord raises partners, as the Lord raises fellow builders, it's, it's a kind of a Nehemiah anointing. And as, as, as these builders come together, you're going to be astonished at what the Lord will do in the course of just a year. You see, what I see is a harvest of sons and daughters. Hallelujah. A harvest of sons and daughters. Do you understand that? Hallelujah. So this... These gifts that God has given to us in Pastor Taiwa and Debola Lemoshe. By the way, she's my namesake. It's something about Debola. It's just, you know, don't touch it. Just leave it like that. And if your name is not Debola, you can, we can bless you. Take it as a middle name. Go and do your avidavit and, you know, swear us as your middle name. Hallelujah. Some people are frowning like you, you better focus on the word and don't let me take it out on you. <laughs> That's the first thing that I saw that God is raising sons and daughters, partners, so that the other prophetic expressions within the womb of his spirit will begin to proceed forth. And we're also going to see along those lines stronger discipleship and mentorship frameworks uh, so that these sons are going to be able to stand in influence across all the different spheres of influence. So he has sons that will take their place in politics and governance, sons and daughters that will take their place in healthcare, energy and environment, media and entertainment, sports and development, do you see? Everywhere, everywhere. And you're going to see that play out in the course of the next three to five years. 
giants are going to be raised out of this house. You are going to see that. And many of the, the uh, game-shaping experiences that we, will exp that we will begin to see as a nation will be born on the wings of saints, raised and grown in this house, who will be sent across all spheres of influence. So many people will be on speed dial, who are forces for good. He'll just be able to say, United Nations, I have a son there. World Bank, no problem, I have a son there. Ogun State Government, my daughter is there. Let me just put a call through to her. Okay, USAID, we have a, a World Health Project. Uh -uh, I have four sons in different parastatals there. We're going to start to see that. So look at the person next to you and say to them, no, they use ordinary eye, they look me. You hear what in DDK, just talk, oh. And I want you to put your hands on your chest and say, I will be a worthy son of the house. That's a prophetic statement, so make it with all your heart. I will be a worthy son of the house in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The second key uh, defining expression that I caught in my spirit concerning this house is that there is an awakening of revival that is going to birth spiritual maturity. If you've encountered revival as a house, and there's been fire on your altar, God says to tell you that what you have seen is just a shadow of what is still coming. I can sense spiritual revival. I can sense spiritual revival because I can see a harvest coming. And this revival is going to mature saints. I can see many sons and daughters who will become giants of the faith being raised out of the house. And underneath number two, let me highlight to you the three things that will trigger this spiritual revival. The first is a return to passionate soul winning. And the Lord highlighted this very strongly in my heart to say that to the house, that there is a wave of revival. There is a wave of fire that is coming upon the house, coming upon your altars. By the way, you know, if the Lord says revival is coming, it's, it's not talking about GC as a building. It's talking about each of you. Hallelujah. And by the time we all come together, you know, that fire just takes off at a whole different level. All of us together. So there is revival coming. And the first thing he said we should pay attention to is a renewed passion for soul winning. A renewed passion for soul harvesting. A renewed passion for evangelism. The second thing is we're going to activate it by the power of intercession. Beyond the corporate times of praying, the Lord is challenging GC as a people back to the place of private devotion to prayer, to intercession. The third way that, we, that the wave of revival is going to ride, the wave of revival is going to ride on the wings of worship. On the wings of worship. Corporate worship in the house. Private worship in your own life. I am going to see this powerful move of the spirit before 2022 closes out you are going to have young believers testifying i pray for seven hours in this house hallelujah if that's you your hallelujah should be louder i pray for seven hours i read an entire book of of the scripture i've never done that before those will be quality testimonies new covenant new testament testimonies that will begin to break out of this house in the name of Jesus Christ. The third thing the Lord said to me to share with you as an ongoing move that you begin to experience as a people, he said to announce the forthcoming move and reign of abundance. Hallelujah. There's an abundant reign coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is going to be shifting a lot of his sons and daughters in this house into a new realm of provision into a new realm of wealth, into a new realm of supply. And the quickest shortcut that I'm going to give to you today by covenant and by scriptural revelation is to expand your acts of mercy. At whatever level you are in your own life, there is someone that you can be a blessing to. There's a school fees that you can pay. You might not be able to set up a wealth fund, a $1 million wealth fund, but there's a school fees you can pay. Say, there's a school fees I can pay. 
there's an accommodation I can sort out. Hallelujah. God is sending us into that arena of the act of mercy, the act of mercy. And as you begin to steward these things in the place of prayer and giving thanks, you are going to see. Maybe I'll be back in December, be a part of your Thanksgiving service and listening on the testimonies that it is done. I can see Pastor Deborah just like, oh yes, you said it so, oh yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you want to rejoice at the word the Lord has given to us today? Praise the Lord God Almighty. It will speak over your life. You'll be a first fruit partaker of what the Lord is doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, half of my work is done. And I bless the Lord. Very half of exactly why I'm here has been done. How are you feeling this morning? You feeling good this morning? I'm feeling so good. I thank God for the opportunity to be here. You are such a warm house. I love God's chamber already. And I, I feel so blessed to spend this time with you. I want to really thank Pastor Taiwo and Pastor Devola. Thank you. Thank you for being fathers. You know, your siblings to my spiritual father and pastor. So I feel so at home. Thank you for everything that you do for the sake of the kingdom. And may the Lord greatly honor you in Jesus' name. Uh, I also saw a few of my siblings, and I want to celebrate them, Pastor Adebayo and his amazing wife, Lady Banki Adebayo. Can you celebrate them? They are gifts to the body, and we greatly honor you. I also saw my sister, Safunke Famoroti. Do you want to really celebrate her doing an amazing work as an inspirational voice? The second uh, part of my time here today is what the Lord said to me. He had given me Psalm 128 for you. But this morning, he said to me to tell his people, there's an ark of the covenant in your home. There's, a ha there's the ark of the covenant in your home. In Psalm 128, we see a prophetic blessing that God is releasing and has released over his church, over the saint. And he said that every one of us who fear him, and that is each and every one of us in this place today, he said that those of us who fear him and walk in his ways, we will eat the fruit of our labor. We will eat the outcome of our hard work and our diligence of our strategic efforts as given to us by the Lord. He said, you are going to be happy and it will be well with you. Now, these are powerful promises. And this is the typology of a family under God. As a family under God, he says there's a blessing in your life. Whether you are in your own nuclear family as a, a, a man with your wife and your children or a woman with your husband and your children or you are currently uh, set up in the, in the family that you grew up in with your parents and your siblings. Whatever family means to you today, the Lord says to tell you that beyond your biological family, you also belong in the family of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because you are in the family of God, the blessing of God is upon your family. And this is the typology of a blessed family. In a blessed family, you have people who fear the Lord and who walk in his ways. In a blessed family, you have people who are diligent, working with their hands and their minds to create solutions for the world. So in a blessed family, you have problem solvers. You have solution providers, you have entrepreneurs, you have career professionals. It's an expression of the force of the blessing. And he said that whatever you put your hands upon, whatever inspiration or idea I give to you, and you begin to work on it, I'm going to cause you to eat the labor of your hands. And that's your testimony. In a blessed family, there is joy. There is happiness. He said you will be happy and it will be well with you. And I want to announce to you today that the blessing of God cannot be, it can't be minimized by the state of the economy. The blessing of God cannot be minimized by the political challenges that a nation is facing. The blessing of God cannot be minimized by exchange rate or fuel scarcity. You are blessed and that is on a period. Hallelujah. You are blessed and you are blessed. Do you know the meaning of the blessing? It's an obligation to prosper against all odds. 
Hallelujah. An obligation to prosper against all odds. A mandate to make it without faking it. Hallelujah. It's an acceleration on your path of destiny. It's a compelling influence of the spirit to move you in the direction of the fulfillment of your destiny. It's a spiritual infrastructure. It's an enforcement in the spirit for you to triumph, for you to thrive, regardless of where you are. In fact, the better way to say it is that the blessing is actually a location. You may think you are in Nigeria, but you are in the blessing. Blessed be God, who's blessed us with every spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. So you operate from, in, and out of the blessing in Christ Jesus. So the blessing is a geographical location in the spirit. And that is why it is not where you are that makes you blessed. It is the blessing on you that makes where you are blessed. So a lizard in Nigeria does not become an alligator in America. Jaguar is not the answer. Now what do we discern? We actually know that God is transitioning a lot of sons and daughters into other parts of the world. It's a move of the spirit. It's not, uh, it's not what the enemy is trying to do. We are not confused. God himself is doing a two-way transition. He's sending some uh, vessels of revival to go and shine as light in other parts of the world. And he is also sending some uh, vessels of light who have been in diaspora back home to be, to be part of our uh, national reclamation, our infrastructural development, our political restructuring, and our social growth. Do you understand this? So there's a two-way transition, and we see that happening. It's not working, and I need it. We see that happening. So when I say Jack, I don't mean everybody who is traveling is trying to sort themselves out. I mean that your focus cannot be on the fact that I'm not blessed except I leave my location. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be distracted. Glory to God. So it is not the location in the flesh that impacts on how blessed you are. It is who you are in the spirit that impacts on how you are able to, you know, to demonstrate the blessing on the earth realm. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So that's the life of a blessed man. You eat the fruit of your labor. You'll be happy and it will be well with you. Your wife will be as a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. You are blessed because you fear the Lord. Now let me say this to you. The family unit is the gatekeeper of the culture and the belief system that those who come out of that family carry into the world. Some of the unproductive patterns, some of the unfruitful paradigms, mindsets, mental attitudes that you carry today were handed to you by parents and significant adults. Now, this is how generational trauma is created. Generational trauma, generational afflictions are created by generational attitudes and generational belief systems. If the enemy wants to afflict a family, he will introduce an anti-scriptural thinking into that family. Because the moment a family, a people, parents, siblings, children begin to hold on to an ideology, a perception, a belief that doesn't honor what God says in his word and what we understand by covenant, what begins to happen is they automate their reality to look like their belief systems. Hallelujah. So guess what? What we have understood as uh, a spiritual family 
has been maybe having times of prayer together. Is that correct? And that's what many wives clamor for. My husband is not spiritual. We don't pray together. How don't we pray together? You now become assistant Holy Spirit. Is this one even born again? Always on his phone. You know, and even his tongues, the way his tongues are sounding, it's not deep. There are wives who say those kind of things. I come on here, Reba, 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 Kini Reba. When pastor will be like, Kori in Korea, so Feneka in Makoka. So they're just like, are you spiritual? Are you deep? You know, and I've heard sisters say things to me like, I can't trust him to carry the mandate of my destiny. Your husband was not meant to carry the mandate of your destiny. It's also a destiny under God. And guess what? The way you are thinking about spirituality is not how God is thinking about it. When robber really meets the road, you understand spirituality in a new way. There are men who have technology of tongues. And can repeat everything that Kenneth Hagin ever wrote in his books. But when their wife is in labor, <laughs> oh my, the jellyfish. Ne? And there are some men, they will appear as if they don't know much of scripture. But in the day of adversity, they stand as a rock. And they stand as a gatekeeper, saying, I'm not losing my wife, I'm not losing my children. What God has given me will be preserved. Our generation must now begin to have our eyes on character. Because character is the anointing within. You might be the more vibrant one. Your, your, your tongues might be advanced. You might know more scripture. But if we begin to restore the covenant principles of honor and order according to the original design of God for marriage you begin to see wonders happening in your home. Let me tell you one of the greatest mysteries that I have seen. I have seen believing wives of unbelieving men sanctify their husbands and their marriage by their submission and their honor. I have seen a great mystery of believing wise, mature, spiritual men covering the failings the immaturity the excesses of their wives in the presence of her broken character and issues you know ladies can have a bit of issues sometimes can you call it ye? you know sometimes but he's covering her he's been patient with her he's not reporting her he's not refusing her and he will carry her through a season till love becomes a revelation. Love is a force of revelation. A day can come where your eyes will open by your own self. You know there's such a thing in the spirit as coming to yourself. It happened to the prodigal son. It's a force of love. Where am I really going this morning? You might think that what matters to build a spiritual family is merely for us to pray together, attend church together, and read from a devotional together. Those things are great. But you might be holding the religious end of an activity that has a deeper meaning. Why does the Lord want us as families to gather around the light of his word? It's not so that we can tick it off religiously. And say we read Zechariah today and we prayed for 30 minutes and we started with songs, we closed with songs. The bigger goal in the heart of God for establishing this powerful covenant doctrine and we see it all through scripture as a way for covenant families to be is so that you can institute an ideology together that is aligned to scripture. This is the real role of parenting. Parenting is the discipleship system through which you brainwash the next generation concerning your preferred belief systems. That's what God was saying to them when he was teaching the children of Israel how to remind the coming generations concerning his ways with them. He said, put it on your foreheads. Write it and have it around your wrists. Put it on your doorpost." From generation to generation, declare what the Lord has done. Remind them how we parted the Red 
prophecy. Speak to them concerning the battles he won. Tell them how the walls of Jerusalem were rebuilt, even in the presence of Sambalat and Tobiah. Let every generation remember what the Lord has done. Because if you remember what he has done, you will believe him for what he can do. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, if the ark of the covenant is in a hole, what is God calling us into? Let me take you to Hebrew 9 very quickly. Hebrews 9. And let us look at what that means. Who knows the name of the family that received the visitation of the Ark of Covenant. What's the name of that family? Obed Adam. What happened when the Ark of the Covenant uh, stayed in the house of Obed Adam for three months? He prospered. When the Ark of Covenant rested in the house of Obed Adam, and the Ark of Covenant is a very profound part of the heritage of the saints, and it has new covenant interpretations, new covenant ramifications, new covenant importance for you today. And what the Lord had primarily put in my heart to share with you, which is what I've started to share, is around these covenant ideologies that we must embrace as a people. And I'm going to go back very quickly into it because it's the heart of my time with you here. Are you getting blessed? I'm getting blessed. The word of God always, always blesses us. Now, when the Ark of Covenant got into the house of Obededom, don't forget... Uzziah tried to steady the ark and then he got into trouble, was struck by the Lord because there's a lesson that you can't help God. Hallelujah, you can't help God. Now some of us are getting into trouble because we're trying to help God. A sister who could have been married at 32 started to buy buns and coke for her HOD. She started to help God. And the Lord was like, okay, why is she another three years? I want to say something under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing I saw in scripture, but it's something I discerned as the Lord sent me into the arena of leading singles into supernatural marriage. Are you noticing that our generation, more than previous generations, are experiencing delays? Are you noticing it? More marital delays. I have conviction in my heart that God is the elder of a significant number of marital delays happening to saints. It's not Satan. You know why? God is looking to accomplish the highest impact in the shortest possible time. We actually don't have any more time to lose grounds to Satan. So you see, what people got married for before is not okay anymore. And God is not having it. Why do many single sisters want to get married? I'm now 30. Two of my cousins who were in their early 20s got married way earlier than me. My biological clock is ticking. Why are brothers ready to get married? He now has a good job, has rented an apartment, and is an eligible bachelor. What in what? He cool. A nice wristwatch. Has a little bar. And is even a minister in church, an ordained minister. What is he waiting for again? But the Lord is saying, I will agitate a generation till you become straightened to my paradigm. Because except you understand my agenda, you are going to play into the hands of Satan cheaply. So if 32-year-olds and 37-year-olds continue to get married, simply because I hold bar and I know be small girl again, we are going to waste time. Because we will not see the family unit as a platoon where warfare strategy is deployed from childhood. Muslims, they take their children from age 3 to Ilekeu. Believers sit their children in front of Coco Melon till they are 15. Then all of a sudden, you wonder why she's not born again and wants to wear tank top, tank top and bomb shorts. We have wasted so much time that God is not joking anymore. 
The family unit is so precious to him that he's happy to keep you single till you get sense. You know, a day to the Lord is like a thousand years. God is happy to start the journey with you at 30 and get you married at 42. Well, it's not long, Lord. You just, I'm telling you. You'll be like, I love you. Or you might be more 42. I will do it. I will search you. But you will have sense. Because you are better married at 42. And you start to disciple warfare instruments for the Lord. From when they are two. Than to be married at 30. And raise children who become victims of sexual abuse. And for those of us who are married. Let's say by mercy you escaped. Even though you married without having sense. The Lord says to announce that we are now in the era of reclamation. Supernaturally. From now, whether your child or children are within the ages of 3 and 10, or they are already in university, there's a move of the Spirit going on now. It's called the Ark of the Covenant in your family. That will set your family right. In the name of the Lord Jesus, our sons and our daughters will live for Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, our toddlers will be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Our seven-year-olds will say yes to the Lord Jesus early. Salvation and sanctification will not be a distant reality in our homes. There's a baptism of the paradigms of Christ. An immersion into the thinking of God. In the name of Jesus. Can you rise and take a moment to pray? For your family. Reclaim your family as a territory under God. Makuria le kotema la baha. Shakoto poto pariba kande baha. Yeba luku pendelia sutele mahande. Eshakata la bara baha. Iboro calls. Pray for your sons. Pray for your daughters. Pray for your husbands. Pray for your wives. Pray for your future spouse. Pray for the children in your womb. That in the name of Jesus. The children in your loins, they will serve the Lord. We reclaim territories in the name of Jesus. Father, align us as a single man and woman pray. Open my eyes to your agenda. Help me to build to last on the foundation of Christ that never fails. Reclaim the territories of your family. Pray that your siblings will receive the life of God. Pray that everyone will come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uncle Pauli Manamaha. Shandele Brandos. Ashakata Balabaha. Rakoto Logodo Beregedes. Makondile Baruski. Sakandi Laba. Etobo Logodo Bahande. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated in Jesus' name. I'm going to move very quickly just to tie in the central thought this morning. The covenant, the Ark of Covenant in, is in your home. It's going to cause you to prosper. It's going to cause your family to prosper. Every single part of your family life will begin to blossom. In the name of Jesus, where there has been strife, where there has been the absence of intimacy, where there has been financial challenges, where there have been children who, who are demonstrating attitudes and personality that scare you, whatever the issues have been, where there have been rancor between father and son and mother and daughter, where in-laws have been set at warfare against one another, whatever the issues have been, infidelity, spiritual lethargy an absence of truth anything that the enemy has assailed your home with the lord says to tell you there will be reclamation as the ark of the covenant begins to manifest in your home things will begin to blossom there will be financial abundance there will be spiritual maturity there will be deep intimacy there will be healing and forgiveness. There will be discipleship of the children. There will even be fruitfulness in your wombs. But I can't afford to leave you 
with just this promise without telling you how to operate these dimensions that God is bringing to us. What does the Ark of Covenant look like? In Hebrews chapter 9, our brother Moses started to expound on what was in the Ark of Covenant. In verse 4, he talked about the Ark of Covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which there were the golden pots that had the manna. Talk about provision. Things will truly blossom. Amen. I've seen the force of the covenant in my marriage. I've seen us literally starting from nowhere and nothing to abundance. Is there any family trusting God for a reign of wealth this year? You will manifest in that reality. It's one of the strong dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant. You will see the hand of God. Let me tell you why we don't activate what opens the golden pot of manna. The code for abundance is agreement. That is it. And that's what the enemy fights. Is agreement. Even if you are not married, there is a legislative force of agreement on the earth. That if two people with one accord stand and they say, we declare on the earth according to the will of God. If two shall agree concerning a thing on the earth, it will be done to them. Now when you take that existing covenant legislative force of agreement and you now layer it on the covenant of marriage. Oh, so Korean dinama. There's nothing my husband and I have not agreed on and seen. Staff who is behaving somehow, but is a great blessing. We will put our hands together. We will call your name Bobolisheni. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we restrain the force of the enemy over your mind. We declare that you rise into your skills, begin to match the requirements of the role, and we see changes. Every new caregiver that comes into our homes, we will hold hands call your name because people come with baggage even you you have baggage that you're dragging how much more strangers who are adults so why will you say i've had 13 caregivers in a year you're not using the force of agreement in fact the force of agreement is so strong that you can't step into a house if you are not ordained to be there so it's not that we'll now be doing mini money more error then you go no even if you are meant to be there for two months you'll be there and you'll be a blessing and you cannot harm us so, that's one of the things in the ark. It's abundance. But uh, the covenant of abundance is powered by agreement. But here's where I'm really taking you, and I have to run there. Aaron's rod that budded. And this talks about priestly excellence. Priestly excellence. The ministries that thrive and succeed the most and have longevity are ministries that are powered by corporate intercession between the couple. I'm telling you. The rod that budded, whatever God puts in your hands, it may look like a dry stick, but it will bud. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Here's where I'm going. The tablets of the covenant. This is the most powerful part of the Ark of the Covenant. So here is my assignment this morning. I've spent some time talking about it. And it's what I want to close on. The way that God is going to reclaim our families. It's not merely for us to pray. It is now for us to create a scriptural manifesto of our own belief systems. And begin to indoctrinate ourselves and our children and those who live with us. If we want to automate the reality of the blessing, there's a way we must think. You can't pray in the morning and say, Lord, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for helping us as a family. Thank you for opening doors for daddy. Then, daddy and mommy, they'll be discussing, then they'll say, Igboro, Igboro, Begon. Shoget, Igboro, Be. Why would you be asking me that the children's school fees? You wonder why, for it, Jack, Kini, why, one Kotoleshe. You'll be speaking as if you are an orphan. How? Da, and if you don't understand your by Igboro, Igboro dry. Like when they say Igboro, it means Igboro. 
Uh, but let me try to say it in, your, in the way you can understand. <laughs> when, you know, so how can you pray in the morning, but your operating system between you and your wife is number one. You, your source is your salary. Uh, you just have to be managing. Uh, what can you do? That's the person feeding us. You talk like that between yourselves. You feel your source is your salary. You feel that the money you have will never be enough for all your needs, so you have to somehow manage. You teach your children that things are never enough, so they should stop asking. So you repress the natural inbuilt desire that God places in children to openly express their needs. It's childlike wonder. Guess what? We become adults in our hearts that we don't even know how to ask God for things. Because that's what our earthly father taught us. So that's how we relate to the heavenly father. Timber, if I my foot, but Timber, what I if I hear anything as I'm entering the supermarket, I don't want to buy four noodles. Timber, bomb on me. If I don't do that, you can teach your children budgeting. So this is what we want to go to do at this time. You can teach them saving, you can teach them investments, you can teach them financial planning, but don't teach them drought. Don't teach them hardship. This is how generational trauma is transferred. Don't indoctrinate your child with anti-scriptural ideologies. Scripture is abundance. Scripture is love. Right? Scripture is forgiveness. So you hold hands and pray together, but you gossip with your children against your husband's younger sister. You are indoctrinating them in a kolepe. So what do we have in the Ark of the Covenant? We have tablets of covenant. Tablets are the commandments that the Lord gave Moses for the people. I'm going to leave you with these words. When the Lord wanted to deliver the children of Israel, what he did first was a geographical transition. What he did next was an ideological transition. Notice that their real deliverance didn't happen after the Red Sea was parted and they moved away. They were still in bondage. They started to say, let us go back. Let us go back to our cucumber and our onions. And God had to perish a generation because they had become imprisoned in their minds by the ideologies that cannot birth enthronement. This, this now we walk. As you they go back house today, this now the real work. Our real work as God, uh, Christ-centered families is indoctrination, is brainwashing. We use storytelling. We use anything to brainwash our children into the belief of scripture. As you are driving them to school, coming back from church, stop focusing on memory verses. Selah, I don't want to touch some things because I know I'm in the presence of my church sisters. But if, if, if after you have learned memory verse, I must show you the thinking behind that memory verse. So that in everyday life, that context and that thinking will drive you be, beyond John 3.16, for God so loved. Hallelujah. Someone visited us and asked my daughter what she wants to be, my older daughter. And she, my daughter listed like five things. Well, I would love to be, uh, sometimes I just feel like maybe I should be an aeronautical engineer. Just because not many people are, she listed like five things. The man said, you can't be five things. She said, no, I can be as many things as I want to be and I will excel in all of them. Then she crowned it by saying, someone is coming downstairs, downstairs soon who is so many things and so good at them. So how I know the gist is, when I came to meet the, the guest, she said, meet the woman who is many things. <laughs> so the man said, ah, Didike, eti shishe la romoi. <laughs> and that means, eti shishe, sorry. That means <laughs> you've walked on this girl. It's indoctrination. And we must begin it again with our own lives. Your true faith is expressed in what you believe in your everyday life. As we align our thinking and our mindset and our conversations to the blessing, you see the ark of the covenant 
causing you to blossom in every part of your life. Can we just bow our heads this morning and just declare in the name of Jesus that the Ark of the Covenant is working in my case. In the name of Jesus, the force of the blessing is working in my case. In the name of Jesus, I embrace new thinking, new paradigms, new ideologies. I allow the word of God to become the yardstick for my decision making. Lord, I repent of every way that I think that is born out of the hustler mode. I allow you to care for me, to nurture me. And I will invest in teaching my children and those with me the ways of the kingdom. Thank you for helping me. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.